Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This is an exclusive CG Aviator first look at the Azure Poly Fuga Magister CM170 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. This aircraft is yet to release. It's due in the next week or so, ideally or hopefully by the 27th of January. It'll be available on the marketplace for the sum of $27.50 or the equivalent of your local currency. The developers of this aircraft are not sponsoring this video and any opinions contained therein are mine and mine alone. Although I did get this aircraft for free to review from them. So thank you to them for this chance to have a look. Another aircraft by this developer includes the BD-5J, also for Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's a small jet aircraft. It's on sim market for 13 euros and 80 cents, including tax. And I'm not sure I didn't see it on Marketplace, but it may well be there as well. Once they've released this aircraft, they'll be doing a massive update to their BD-5J to bring it up to the current standards that you'll see on this aircraft now. When released, this will be available with eight liveries. The one you see here is the Irish Air Corps. There'll also be a couple of Pakistani Air Force uh, liveries, the Dutch, the Patrouille Tonchon, if I pronounced that correctly. The Irish Air Corps, as you see it, the Tiger Meat livery, which is excellent, and the CM170 Classic All Metal Paint Job. I've changed position of the aeroplane so the sun is illuminating the uh, instrument panel. Here in the cockpit, you can see it's nicely modeled. The wear and tear of the, uh, of the textures is really nice. Some are slightly low resolution from what I've seen, but that uh, may be fixed, but actually isn't too much of an issue as long as you're not zooming in close up to each of the uh, canopy rails. Wear and tear looks great. Uh, you've got a iPad in the front. Fixed spot is to the top of the canopy, or the cockpit, sorry. Add and remove, and that will control your external elements. Uh, parking equipment, you can open and close canopies from here. Smoke selector, there's also a smoke switch up here. A hydraulic failure trigger and an oxygen valve. Those are the features that are currently here that I could find. I'll remove that. Of course, you can open and lower the canopy just clicking, so it's open currently. Ball joint, it comes down, automatically locks. If you want to unlock it, that's the handle to unlock, and then click in the ball joint to open. So nicely animated. Other than that, around the cockpit, you've got standard instruments, albeit uh, very vintage, so difficult to understand. Uh, this isn't a demo, this isn't a teach, so I'm not going to talk through what each of the instruments are. Not in this video, anyway. Uh, you've got the radio navigation and talking uh, equipment on the right hand side, then you've got some circuit breakers, the engine starts systems got the uh, fuel cocks and the ignition on the left. Some more circuit breakers, some lighting, some air conditioning and cabin pressurization. Flap switch is here just aft of the throttle and the gear switch is just here, the red lever. Not overly intuitive, but a nice, uh, nicely represented cockpit. Let's jump into the back seat because of course this is an instructor aircraft. So camera, go pilot. At this equally as nicely modeled uh, the elephant in the room being the periscope that was in the real aircraft and it's designed if someone sat in the front seat with their head in the way you can use this to see it over the top and fly the airplane i'll try and remember to check if that actually works but if it's just a model it's just a nice uh, representation everything else in the back works everything is clickable that i've found so uh, nice to see that and whilst i'm in the back i'm going to close the canopy both and locked. So I thought it best to include a comparison at this point between the payware and the freeware. You can see on the left, there's a poly payware. Looks very nice, nicely textured. On the right, uh, the freeware looks a little bit plasticky. From the top-down view, the main difference you'll see apart from the cockpit transparencies is the Azure Poly version on the left has very pinched nacelles, whereas the freeware model does not. And I've seen uh, blueprint diagrams of both variations, so it is still authentic. From the left-hand side, the main feature being the canopy transparencies, a lot nicer on the payware underneath. So in the front seat, I'm going to get this aircraft started. We're going to take it airborne and see what the handling characteristics of it are. I will say I found some. I found a real checklist. There should be a manual available with the aircraft when it's released. There is a checklist. I'm not going to follow it because this is a French cockpit, so all the instruments are labelled in French, uh, and it would be quite tricky to actually follow the appropriate procedures. Here's how I know how to start it. I'll leave the canopy up for now so you can hear the noise. Battery comes on and we can go straight down here to the starter. I'm going to start the right first. 
and you'll see it, you'll hear it spooling up. The RPM gauge is top left. Once that gets to 1200 RPM, then we will hit the uh, fuel cock and the igniter. That sets roughly there. Right, forward, and ignition. Listen to that startup noise, that sounds incredible. Okay, the engine has started. What I'll do now is switch on the generator, switch on all the avionic switches, so that'll start erecting the gyros, and then start the left. This is getting a little noisy, I will lower the canopy. Canopy down and locked. There's only one thing left to do, and that is to taxi out and go fly. The design of the aircraft itself uh, is based on an old glider, hence the long straight wings. If I pop the speed brakes out, you'll see that they very much look like uh, what you'd expect on a glider. At the rear of the aircraft, you'll notice a small tail wheel, a slight hangover from the glider, but also useful for aerodynamic braking. Uh, the V-tail or butterfly tail is also an excellent feature of this aeroplane. It was designed to reduce the amount of surface area there was on the tail end without having a dedicated vertical and horizontal stabilizer. The aircraft two-seat is of course a training aircraft, but it was adapted for air-to-ground roles with uh, cannons and I believe uh, rockets perhaps. Those I don't believe are available on this model. If you use a HOTAS key uh, with the key bindings, you can select various stages of flap, but if you use the switch in cockpit, you see there are motor down until you select the center point, which is stop. So you can select whatever degree of flap you wish. I have no idea what the speed is in terms of units, and I don't know what the performance of the aircraft is like, so I'm kind of guessing it and doing it by feel. It's probably around about 150, that'd be plenty. We're off. They're pretty darn quick in terms of taking off. Now, for an old aircraft, they're expected to be slightly underpowered. I don't have experience in this aircraft. Type. Of course, if you do, then feel free to comment. I'd love to hear what your opinion is on how the thing looks and flies. It's always useful to get that first hand experience. The external model does look brilliant. Let's see if we can do some aerobatics. It is fully aerobatic, it was used by a lot of aerobatics teams. Easily done. Really nice and easy to handle as you'd expect from a straight wing aircraft. In terms of stall performance and what you'd expect for the slow speed and loss of control situation. We're down at 100, whatever units they are. You don't get any buffet. The aircraft essentially just ignores your stick input. And I've got full back stick here. And you slowly go down. Vertical speed in excess of uh, 6,000 feet a minute. It also doesn't want to spin like the uh, usual GA aircraft in Microsoft Flight Sim, you tend to get to the stall, you get some buffet, and then it will just wing drop and spin crazily down to the ground. This doesn't appear to do that. Put some rudder in, let's see if it'll spin. That's right rudder and back stick at the stall. It just doesn't want to spin, which may be accurate based on its own characteristics and flight dynamics. Okay, another quick interlude where we're in the back seat now of the Fuga Magister. Just having a look in the periscope, and it doesn't appear that you can use it. Uh, which I wouldn't expect it to be possible based on the limitations uh, of Microsoft Flight Sim. It'd be a nice feature if they could ever get that working. 
The reflections in there are nice and it's nicely modelled. This, uh, I've just taken an opportunity to get into the Tiger Meat version because this is probably my favourite. Each to their own yellow pink. It looks very nice indeed. Also in the front seat, I want to have a look at quick look at the smoke effects. So down on the iPad, you can pre-select the color that you wish. I'm going to go for green. And then on the front, you can click smoke to switch it on. It's nice to see the smoke only starts behind the aircraft. I did notice a bug with the white smoke where it kind of starts forwards of the fuselage. And hopefully that'll be a bug that'll be fixed prior to release. Very green. Well, we've had a look at the periscope function, or modelling thereof, and the smoke. I'll go back to the rest of the video. That's us complete with the airborne portion. Let's uh, take it back to land and see what the landing performance is like. It does look very nice, I have to say. Okay, speeds I have no idea. I'm a little bit slow, I think, so I'm going to keep around about 150 to touch down. It flaps all the way down. Go down. Quite heavy on the nose. Couldn't quite get an aero brake. It was either airborne or just wanted to drop the nose. And I'm flying this live, so I'm flying, doing the camera work and commentating, so don't judge me too harshly. There we go. First flight of the... Well, I lie. I've done this two or three times. But this is the first review flight successfully recorded of the Fuga Magister CM170. With the canopy open, you can hear the change in engine note, which is always nice to hear. So, in summary, this has been an exclusive first look of the Puga Magister CM170 by Azure Poly. It's going to be a payware aircraft available on Marketplace from the 27th of January. And it should be at $27.50 or equivalent in your own currency. The question, of course, remains would you buy it? Having seen what you've seen and from what I've said, throw in a comment. Tell me what you think. Would you get this? Is it worth the money? Always interesting to hear what you think. I do plan on doing more videos within this aircraft because I find it quite enjoyable and I love the vintage feel. So if you want to stay up to date with those, please remember to hit subscribe. Thanks very much and take care.